Did you hear the alarm bells this morning? Did you hear them? That was not the woke mating call of Shay Shay Sharp. Some people, they get the bells mixed up, but Shay Shay, his mating call is distinct. It's the same sound that a cat makes when they're in heat. This was a different alarm bell, very similar to a tornado warning. It was coming from the tower of Woke United Methodist. The deacons are sounding the alarm. There is panic starting to set in. Decades of hard work, this dream of transforming America into this woke utopia where speech is restricted, firearms, firearms only in the hands of criminals and woke law enforcement agencies, children's head off to a gender-fluid school where the biggest decision of the day is not ordering lunch from the cafeteria, it is selecting which gender you identify with on that particular school day. This woke utopia where graduates of woke you remain in power indefinitely. No more worrying about those pesky elections every two years. No more worrying about that damn Supreme Court following the Constitution. To hell with the Constitution. We abide by the laws of the woke Bible. This utopian dream set in motion in the 1960s was pushed into fast forward the last two years. This utopian dream is slowly sinking to the bottom of the woke sea. They can see it. They can feel it. Members of Woke United Methodists, they have come to the realization America is rejecting wokeism. Now, this does not mean they are going to give up. If they cannot achieve their dream through diplomacy, mark my words, they will try to achieve it through force. But that's a topic for another day. Right now, they are still trying to convert you to wokeism through diplomacy, through preaching the good word, sharing the good news, explaining to people how they can be baptized in the woke bath, be born again, and experience cucumber insertion. They share this good word through propaganda in the mainstream media. One of their biggest propaganda machines is located in Bristol, Connecticut in the halls of ESPN, the Entertainment Sports Propaganda Network. For two years, L. Duncan has turned the 6 p.m. edition of SportsCenter into the woke propaganda hour. If I were Jamel Hill, I would be suing ESPN for wrongful termination. They fired her dumb ass for calling Donald Trump a white supremacist and being too political on air. I cannot believe I'm about to say this, but L. Duncan is a hell of a lot more political than Jamel Hill, at least in terms of propaganda pushed on the airwaves at ESPN. Jamel Hill, she was neutered by ESPN executives. L. Duncan? She seems to have free reign to push whatever lies and bullshit that she wants. And ooh, she makes one hell of a propaganda pie. After the school shooting in Uvalde, Texas back in May, L. Duncan was not talking about highlights from the NBA playoffs on SportsCenter. She wasn't covering the College World Series, Major League Baseball, the NHL playoffs. No, 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 no. What the fuck are you thinking? A show called SportsCenter talking about sports? L. Duncan used over two minutes of airtime to go on a fake emotional tirade about gun control. Watch for yourself. I speak a lot on protecting your peace, especially on this show, and I do believe that to be true uh, because I use distractions. Maybe that's why you turned us on tonight for that very reason, you were getting away from the news. I get that. Just to distract from the sense of dread that was sitting in my stomach. The same ones that many of you feel when you go into grocery stores or movie theaters or outdoor festivals. Um, we put our kids to bed at night and we have an expectation that they're gonna make it to morning, right? Under our protection and love, only to send them into a reality where you just have to hope they're faster to the hiding places than the other kids at school. You know, good luck. Uh, you heard Steve Kerr, and he's right. Don't grow numb to this. A society that makes willingness to stand in front of an assault rifle a job requirement for a fourth grade teacher who, by the way, is making 30 grand a year. If we won't do anything else to protect the innocence from the reality that we have created for them, then we owe them at the very least the respect of acknowledgement, no matter how disruptive to our peace of mind. I will give her a little bit of credit. 
At least she has the self-awareness to acknowledge that people tune into Sports Center to get away from the news. Now, of course, she follows that up by giving viewers the opposite of what they expect to see on ESPN. Then they wonder why ratings for Sports Center declined by 200,000 viewers from the same day in June 2019. A drop of 200,000 viewers in the span of three years. Elle Duncan claims that she has this sense of dread when she drops her kids off at school, when she goes to the grocery store. This is bullshit. If she was truly afraid of sending her kids off to school, she would homeschool them. L. Duncan collects half a million dollars in woke welfare every year from ESPN. She can afford to homeschool her children. She's not afraid to send her kids to school. She wants you to be afraid to do that. I showed you guys that graph the other day. Kids are thousands of times more likely to be killed by abortion than killed in a school shooting. School shootings are very rare. Thousands of abortions happen every day. Now, we'll dig a little bit deeper into abortion in just a second because L. Duncan once again showed off her complete shit fuckery. But the premise, the premise behind her fake emotional tirade on gun control was safety. We must get rid of guns. We have to protect the children. There is no such thing as safety. It is not the responsibility of the government to keep you safe. It's your responsibility. Outlawing automatic rifles, outlawing semi-automatic rifles, that is not going to keep you safe. New York City and Chicago has some of the strictest gun laws in the country. You know what else they have in common? They have the highest murder rates. Turns out, criminals don't apply for gun permits. They just simply buy them off the street. Two and a half years ago, after the death of Kobe Bryant, L. Duncan started the girl dad trend. Back in 2018, she had a private conversation with Kobe Bryant at an event in New York City, and he told L. Duncan that he was a girl dad. 24 hours after his death, L. Duncan shared the story on SportsCenter, and it started a national trend, a trend that still exists to this day. Fathers who take their daughters out to lunch, they will capture the moment and post it to social media with the hashtag girl dad. Fathers who teach their daughters how to play softball or basketball, whatever the fuck. They will use the hashtag girl dad. It was a positive movement. I'll credit L. Duncan for helping to start it. It highlighted the importance of fathers in the lives of their daughters. But you know how these woke shit fucks operate. They cannot allow anything to stay positive. Everything must be political. Every movement must be used to further the agenda. The other night on Sports Center. L. Duncan stained the girl dad movement. She went to her nice little woke paint set, grabbed the abortion paint, and stained girl dad with the abortion rights movement. Oh, it was such a pretty color, too. Here she goes again on another fake emotional tirade. Watch for yourself. And when you sit at this desk, bad faith characters lay in wait to attack the method instead of the message. A couple of years ago, after I shared a story about Kobe Bryant on this very sports center, and if I'm being honest, the, uh, the legacy of Girl Dad has always been incredibly complicated for me, A, uh, because they were Kobe's words and ultimately I was only sharing them in the wake of unspeakable tragedy, but also because over time, what started as a touching tribute to the bond between fathers and daughters has turned mostly into a kitschy, commercialized catchphrase. I know you've seen the t-shirts. I certainly see the hashtags. You know, you're playing catch in the yard, hashtag girl dad. Father's Day picks, hashtag girl dad. Literally any content with a girl in it, girl dad. But strip girls of their constitutional rights, silence. I want the dads watching to ask themselves a really honest question right now, and I mean that. How does the sentiment of being a girl dad evolve beyond superficial social media posts into actual advocacy? Are you carrying that same pride for your daughters into boardrooms, locker rooms, courtrooms? Can you confidently state to the women in your lives that you've used your power and privilege as men for their betterment? I am filled with fear. But this is not a fire drill, and so I'm going to keep speaking up, even when it is uncomfortable, even when it means saying goodbye to my mentions, even if it alienates me from a faction of the public. First of all, 
Bad faith characters lay in wait to attack the method instead of the message. That's some good bullshit. I mean, that is some really good bullshit. We don't have to attack the method because it's far too easy to attack the message. The message is always, always 100% propaganda. There's no truth to it. L. Duncan is literally mocking fathers for using the girl dad movement for its original intent. This movement was not started to push some twisted political ideology. Kobe Bryant did not say he was a girl dad to argue about the constitutionality of Roe versus Wade. Which, by the way, let me dispel this myth. I keep seeing woke dumbasses claim the Constitution gives women the right to have an abortion. That is 100% false. Nowhere in the Constitution does it state women have the right to abort their child. The federal government doesn't have that kind of power. State government does. Federal government doesn't. L. Duncan called out fathers for remaining silent on abortion rights. She called out fathers for not bringing politics into their boardrooms at work, for not bringing politics into locker rooms. Um, last I checked, most people want politics out of boardrooms and locker rooms. She asked how the sentiment behind the Girl Dad movement hasn't evolved into political advocacy. Um, Ellie, the fucking movement was never meant to be political. It was meant as something between fathers and daughters. That's it. It's that simple. It wasn't meant as another tool for fathers to use to ensure their daughters had rights to have an abortion. One of the biggest things that caught my attention, L. Duncan claimed, Men should use their power and privilege to protect abortion rights. What kind of sense does that make? Just think about it. What L. Duncan is basically saying, men should fight for their daughter's rights to kill their own grandchildren. The premise is absolutely ridiculous. Why would they do that? And what fucking privilege do men have? L. Duncan, your entire movement is about emasculating men, turning men into women, downplaying the importance of fatherhood. Your entire movement is anti-men. You call it toxic masculinity. This is the same woman that went on yet another emotional tirade on SportsCenter a couple of months ago about the rights of a six-year-old child to choose their gender in school. L. Duncan has transformed SportsCenter into her own political advocacy platform. If ESPN were smart, if they really wanted to draw ratings on Sports Center, they would put Sage Still across from L. Duncan and let them debate gun control and abortion rights, gender fluidity with children. ESP is already a political network. Go ahead and make it fair. Present your viewers with both opinions and let them decide. But ESPN will never do that. L. Duncan would never agree to it if they did because she knows. Sage Steele would make her look like a complete shit fuck. Sage Steele would embarrass L. Duncan. These people do not want debate. They want 100% compliance to their ideology. L. Duncan ended her stupidity by claiming once again that she's full of fear. Oh, I'm so scared. What are we going to do? The Supreme Court just gave abortion rights back to the people to decide. We cannot allow people to vote on issues that affect them. They're too stupid. They need smart people like me to decide for them. Yeah. L. Duncan, the epitome of brilliance. She is another proud graduate of Woke U. She majored in plight of the useless with a minor in how to look like a man. Just think, just think about how far SportsCenter has fallen. This show used to be mainstream. It used to impact the culture. SportsCenter used to draw one, two million viewers. Today, they average between three and 400,000. SportsCenter used to have stars, Dan Patrick, Kenny Main, even the winner of The Biggest Loser, Keith Olbermann, Stuart Scott. These guys were legends. Now we have L. Duncan. L. Duncan. A legend in her own mind. A woman with absolutely no place in sports media. But let me know what you think. L. Duncan has a fake emotional breakdown on gun control and abortion rights. Do you think this is the reason Sports Center ratings are in the pooper? 
Let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys tomorrow.